Hello, everyone. This is Elsbeth McSorley with Mega International. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Shadow SaaS, Gain Control Over Unknown Business Applications. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We are thrilled to have you. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please send them through the questions box on your GoToWebinar toolbar. We will either answer them during the presentation or save all the questions and get to them at the end. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with everyone who registers. So, with our little housekeeping items out of the way, let me now introduce you to today's speakers. We have Eduard Doso. He is the COO and co-founder of Beamy. And Hello, Pre-Sales Director at Mega International. Hello, everyone. So I'm now going to turn the presentation over to Edward. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And uh, hello, everyone. Nice to nice to meet you. So uh, before before jumping on the, the this webinar, I'm sure all you guys know about Mega, but maybe you don't know about Bimi. We introduced our partnership together a few months ago, so I will just do a very quick intro about who we are. Uh, before we jump on the on today's topic about shadow SaaS, so uh, Beamy is um, actually a, a software company, a SaaS company, and we help large organization and and CIOs to better govern SaaS explosion and and enable the business. So we are a team of 50 employees at present, which is double down the number of people last year. So we are growing fast. Plan to recruit 40 new person this year. Our head office in here is in in Europe, actually in Paris. We have an office in London and we plan to open very soon in the US. Uh, we're working with uh, more than 30 uh, very large uh, international clients such as uh, BNP Paribas, Nestle or, or LVMH. And today uh, during this webinar, we're going to show some examples of, of those kind of clients um, and, and, and their, their situation right now with the, the, the SaaS stack, which is growing. So we have a technology which is quite powerful in discovering those SaaS and, and helping our, our client on the governance part. And we're also um, basing our, our capability based on the on, on the very strong knowledge about SaaS and on the 50K SaaS catalog, which actually help us to uh, detect all the application of our client and push like insight about those different SaaS. So I come back to that, but this is a very important asset of our technology. So that's it with who we are. I will be glad to answer any question if you have. Uh, let me introduce the agenda of the today's webinar. So I'm going to start first with by, by giving you um, an introduction about the stakes of the SaaS explosion in Shadow IT. What are the, the figures that we see at our client side? Uh, what are the stakes? What are what is, is the risk are behind? The budget implication and so on. We'll have also a quick poll to, in, to introduce the, the topic. Then I will jump on a, a concrete case study of one of our bank, bank insurance clients, uh, European uh, large bank insurance, and to show you concrete numbers uh, on what we've detected and, and what were the, the risk behind that and what was the gain for this kind of project. And then I will hand over the mic to, to Axel for Beamy Mega Solution demo. Uh, and we'll have a Q&A uh, session at the end, so feel free to use the chat for, for that. So before we start, uh, we'd just like to, to play a little uh, poll together uh, to, to make sure we, we have uh, actually uh, an active and interactive webinar. So uh, we have two questions for you. The first one will be um, how many SaaS publishers do you think are implemented in your, in your organization? You will have different choice. And the second question will be uh, what is the part of those SaaS that are actually are directly managed by the business teams and not managed by the IT? So I will launch the first poll directly and you will have like a few seconds to answer it so normally it's going to pop up on your screen right now can you see the poll yes it's clear yeah we can see it because yeah. i don't see any answer on my side so i don't think people got it Ah, it's popping it now. It's in progress. It's in progress. We have a few. <laughs> okay. For those who vote, just give them the time. I will tell you when. Almost done. All right. We give a few more seconds and then we close the poll.
Okay, I'm closing the poll now. So uh, then let's let's jump in the second question right away, and then we'll come back to the to the results. So the second question is um, how many? What is the proportion actually of those SaaS that are directly managed by the business teams and not by the IT team in your organization? All right, a few more seconds to, un to answer. Yeah, 10 more seconds. It's almost done. All right, yeah, I'll close the poll. Thank you very much. So um, if we share the result of the, of the first poll, um, quite interesting um, to see that. Uh, so I don't know if you see it on the screen right now. Maybe yeah. it will take. Yeah, second. we can see the result. Yeah. You can see the result. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see that 40% of you, the majority, thinks that there are less than 50 SaaS uh, in your in your organization, um, and actually 27% uh, of the people think that there is between 50 to 200, and um, so so it means majority of like people think there is lo less than 100 in, in, in total in your organization. Um, let, let's look at let's look at the result of the of the second one. In terms of what is the proportion that is managed by by the IT, um, so the, the results are much more balanced, and it's interesting to see here that the majority of people think that there's a big part of the, the SaaS actually managed directly uh, by the business. Uh, so yeah, very interesting to see your result. Now we're going to see what is what is the reality behind, and who is actually right or not. So for sure, this depends on the size of the organization and on the on the policy. I will, I will show you what we have uncovered at our different clients. So uh, in this slide, what you can see is actually four clients that are working with uh, with BME today. So it's clients from five to 10K employee on the scopes that we share here. This figure in green, this is a number of SaaS that were actually listed by the IT team or by the procurement team at the beginning of the project when we started it. And actually what you can see on the right of it, um, the, the, red, the figure in red, this is a number of SaaS that we have actually detected that were actually used and paid in the organization. So it's interesting to see that most of the time uh, it's the, the shadow SaaS impact is times two to times five in terms of volumes. Uh, even in big bank insurance, well, we'll like jump into a, a, a concrete case study just, just after. Even if they they had some process, they had the CASB, they have security protocols and governance processes, um, it was very hard for them to to control this shadow SaaS growth. And interestingly, the figure in blue is showing you actually the trend, the growth rates. So um, in 2021, it was a massive acceleration of SaaS for most of our clients, and the average rate of of growth is actually between 20 to 30 percent. Of SaaS year-on-year -year growth. Um, so if we if we try to to, to step back a bit from from this um, uh, problem, um, at all our clients, all the organizations, there is actually a short-term issue where the IT governance is not really able to keep the pace of the SaaS acceleration from the business teams. On average, a large organization is using today 200 SaaS, and part of these 200 SaaS, 60% are actually completely in shadow IT means they are not no not referenced anywhere. 25% are in the gray area where they are known, they are maybe referenced from one team, but they are not really mastered globally. It means we don't know who is in charge. Do we have a contract? What kind of data is hosted? Do we have like personal data that are outside of the country? And so on and so on. And only 15% of the SaaS stack is actually fully mastered and fully secured uh, in a proper way. So this is a really big problem, but it's a short-term problem. Interestingly, uh, if we look at the, the growth rate from uh, KPMG and Gartner, and it's actually exactly what we see at our clients, it's just the beginning of the SaaS wave. And um, today, an organization which is using 200 SaaS will actually use, use more than 1,000 SaaS in 10 years. So it means it's accelerating very, very fast. 
with two trends. So the, the, the blue curve actually that you see here is from KPMG saying that today a large organization is using like 17% of their business as app in SaaS and it will be 80% in 10 years. And the red curve here is showing you um, what is a part of the SaaS that are actually managed by the business. So some of you uh, were right when they said that the majority of the SaaS were actually managed by the business because this is a reality today. And it's a very big parting shift where in large organization, it used to be a process where when the business have a solution need, they can discuss with the IT and the IT will answer to this need with a solution. And now with the SaaS evolution and the market evolution, when the business have a need, they can also find something online by themselves and they can actually launch a SaaS application and manage SaaS application by themselves. This is what we call actually the decentralization of the technology. And so if we try to see what is the impact behind that is like most of our clients are governing their core IT um, very well using platform like, like Mega, like OPEX to like coordinate everything and like master everything. But what they don't see is this shadow IT, uh, shadow SaaS actually uh, part, which is actually growing and, and far bigger than what, what they estimate. And the impact are three major impact in terms of budget for, for sure, because the budget is carocating in terms of SaaS. Just to give you one number, uh, KPMG said that in 10 years, the SaaS budgets of company will be multiplied by nine. So it means tens of millions of euros or, or dollars are like split in the organization, but actually are not really known and, and not really governed at, at present. And then there's a second big issue about risk and security, because behind each SaaS, there is actually data privacy, um, confidential information, uh, there might be like a cyber issue when, when we don't control those, uh, those SaaS. And actually, um, just to give you an example, this is what, what happened to Decathlon, a major company here in, in, in Europe, uh, having exposed 10% uh, of their uh, employee uh, data because of a SaaS in shadow IT that was not integrated with, um, with the core IT. And the last problem on the bottom is the digital frictions that we can see like, like evolving and more uh, uh, that we, we see more and more of our clients struggling uh, aligning their business team and their IT team because the business team want to go fast, they want to be agile, they got pressure from their management and from their the client to digitalize the activity so they find SaaS application very like nice for them to, to go fast and, and, and accelerate and on, on the other side uh, you have the IT teams that are like overwhelmed with a lot of requests they don't have the resources to answer to all those requests so sometimes they can be seen as bottleneck in the organization and the business is going around that so what we try to do with BME is to help our client to like identify the shadow IT and eradicate it for good and actually transform it into a decentralized IT, into a form of IT which is which will be managed by the business, authorizing the organization, but under control. So we're trying to, to build this kind of this, this this new collaboration framework between the IT and business. Interestingly, Gartner said that um, uh, it's becoming a vital issue for 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 department to uh, for IT department to implement this kind of solution, and they predict that by 2026, 50% of the organization will actually use a SaaS management platform to detect, secure, manage the SaaS stack, and this SaaS management platform will be in between the CASB expense management software, SAM software, ITSM, uh, etc. So uh, now, we, if, if I answer to what do we do at BME to solve this problem, we, our, our solution is built on three parts. The first part is obviously is discovery because we cannot control, we cannot govern what we don't know. So we, we actually uh, use multiple sources of, 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 um, of data from our client and our database and our algorithm to automatically detect all the SaaS used within the organization and to build a, a catalog. If I show you an example of a result of a discovery, uh, this is what we're going to get at the end of a discovery. Like, number of SaaS that are uncovered, number of SaaS that are in shadow IT, the costs actually split between BUs and the IT, the categorization and the risk. And with that in hand, we are able to convince the CIO, the CFO and the different stakeholders that we need to move ahead to organize a new governance framework and work on the management area where we're going to help the client to master the contract, minimize the risk, optimize the budget, set up a new governance framework, and then democratize the, the SaaS application toward the business um, and building a new way for the IT and the business to collaborate together. So I will answer to the different question on how it works, but I can give you like um, a, a macro explanation of how it works. So we have a detection capabilities 
based on multiple sources. So we're collecting supplier journal uh, information from the ERP of our clients, internet browsing load from proxy, um, SSO, YAM information, CASB information, different app repository information. And we are actually, actually crunching those data together with our algorithm, together with our database of 50K SaaS in order to list all the SaaS that are like actually uh, used in a company with different like data points and like insight for our clients. And then we're pushing those results into our Clarage platform and we're able to, to help you to build a catalog. Um, let's jump into a concrete example now. Uh, I, will, I will go in detail into this example of a bank insurance uh, based in the Europe here that we, we are working with since two years. So what, what was the status when we started to, to, to work with this client? So it's a bank insurance, 7K employees on one country, five subsidiary. Uh, when we discussed with the CIO and, and the procurement directors, they, they gave us a, a list of 70 SaaS that were actually known in the organization for $8, $8 million of, of expense. The first thing we did is we actually collected their uh, accounting base from, from the ERP and their, their web broadening log uh, actually from the, from the proxy and we, we matched actually those, those data with our database. And this is a, this, this is a result that we, we, we found. From the 70 SaaS that were listed, we actually uncover 150 SaaS that were in shadow. So you can see some logos here that I'm sure you, you, might, you might know about. Uh, and actually, these 155 SaaS that were in shadow were actually totally a budget of 9 million uh, US dollars. So it was a big part of the, of, the, of the SaaS budget that were actually not known, completely decentralized in the BU and, and not aware of. And when we dig into some contracts, so some of the SaaS were actually not critical to some SaaS, but HR management, like project management and so on, not so critical to have those kind of SaaS in shadow. But then we dig in and we find some SaaS that were actually much more critical. Like you can see on the right here, there were a contract with Criteo, uh, which is a re retargeting software uh, of 400K uh, USD that was completely in shadow IT. So it was very surprising to see how, how a big contract like that can be in shadow. So when we were discussing with the procurement after that, we, we understood that this particular SaaS was actually known by the procurement, but it was not flagged as a SaaS solution, or neither an, as an IT solution. It was a service, marketing service um, uh, for, for um, advertisements uh, uh, to the client. So it's interesting because SaaS, software as a service is like between two worlds. It's between the software world and between the service world. And sometimes it's very hard for, for procurement team to well understand w w where they should put this application. Uh, other examples were very critical, a solution like Cornerstone in HR management or iAdvice, which is a client chatbot online. We're actually completely in shadow, which was actually highly critical for, for, for the clients. And totally, if you look at the, at the budget of the SaaS, 17 million, compared to the budget of the large ERPs, which is 30 million, it starts to, to get to a point where uh, it, it's, not, it's not something small anymore. So th that was interesting results. Then the second thing we did after doing this um, first detection, we actually reconciliate with the client data. So they were utilizing OPEX, so we, we, we get an extraction from OPEX um, to understand which SaaS was known in OPEX, which SaaS was not known. We get an extraction from the security team, from procurement team, from GDPR, and then we, we, we did a, actually a match analysis. And, and totally in, from the 20, um, 225 SaaS that we have detected, 31% were actually um, um, known and, and listed in OPEX, 42% in Evalua, which was a procurement software, 23% in OneTrust, which is a, a data, data, data protection um, a solution, and only 19% were actually known by the security team. So it was a bit, a bit shocking for the client because they had a process where each and every application should go to the IT, should go to the security, and, and we uncover two problems, shadow IT problem, but also the fact that those teams do not collaborate well together when it comes to SaaS. So it, it, it was also interesting, and, and that's, why we, we, that's how we, we help them to, 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 to improve the situation. And the last thing, last thing we did with the client, after doing this reconciliation part, we actually helped them to coordinate together, because it's a lot of different stakeholders, from the governance teams like IT, procurement, GDPR, security, but also from business teams and SaaS publishers, all these people need to collaborate together. And that's what we did with our platform. And at the end, at the end of the day, 
uh, it was uh, uh, in, in terms of, of, of ROI and, and, and value added. Um, so if I jump into the, the, the end figure, so this client, uh, so this 225 SaaS, interestingly to see where it comes from, so mainly marketing, uh, mainly finance, HR, IT, uh, like spending the most out of SaaS solution. A lot of solutions were actually critical in terms of, uh, of GDPR or, or security risk. And the majority of the budget was like, as I said, decentralized into the BU. If I move to now to the, to the ROI, um, we, we measured the ROI in three areas. Uh, we help the client to improve the mastering of their SaaS and improve the collaboration level between all the, those different parties. And they were, they were actually uh, uh, saving three FTE in terms of cost avoidance or time gain. So it was 400k USD per year of, 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 of savings. The second uh, ROI axis was on the risk reduction, because obviously for big bank insurance like that, they have compliance issue, uh, they are controlled by the European authority on their cloud asset registry and, and so on. So we help them to uh, improve their uh, risk mitigation in terms of image and, and penalty. And the last part was regarding the budget, because obviously when you have so much shadow IT and so much SaaS that are actually installed and, and, and used by different teams that don't talk to each other and there is no transparency, you have a lot of duplicate, a lot of redundancy. So we help them to improve the synergy, improve the contract optimization and renewal process, and they were able to save like more than 500k per year of OPEX uh, cost. So that was the story of this client. Um, now we'll hand over the mic to, um, to Axel, and I will be keen to get any question from you at the end if you want to understand more about the, the technology and, and if you want to, to, to have a better understanding of what we do. Thank you, Edouard, for the great story. It was really useful for this first presentation of SADOSAS. Uh, let me take over for you for the, for the demonstration to put in motion to see how it works. Let me uh, share my screen. I should be able to share my screen in a sec. I can't actually. Uh, I'm a presenter. No, you have to put me as a presenter, please. I can do it by myself. Okay, show my screen. So if this, give me a second, you see my screen, just let me know. It's good. I just have two slides, uh, just to uh, just represent what will be the, the, the benefits for EA practices to have this integration with a platform like BIMI, Sado, uh, SAS Discovery BIMI, BIMI the SAS platform discovery, sorry. Um, for sure, I think that Edouard already presented the, the, the benefit of uh, having that kind of platform just to know more about your, your SADOSAS. In the context of an enterprise architecture, for sure, the first benefit will be to have the full IT inventory. Uh, when we work with our, with our customer, we always launch the EA practice with what we call the EA baseline. That will be the first step to do when we want to go into an EA project that could be for cost optimization for transformation and so on. And the basis is to have a complete IT inventory. That means know well your IT, that could be your applications, your technology, your capabilities and so on. And using a tool such BIMI will ease and facilitate the collection of all your application, your SaaS application. And we will start doing the demonstrations, the example that we had, and we do this with a customer and we end up with many application that wasn't uh, in the repository first because they was they, they weren't aware of those applications. So first, doing the IT inventory to know how many applications you have, know the ratio between your SaaS application, your on-prem application, and understand uh, your percentage of shadow IT, IT, shadow SaaS, basically. Then when you have your full inventory, for sure you can start doing a few optimization by identifying functional redundancies, and here, uh, in that case, reduce the different costs when you have multiple applications, the on-prem and the SaaS application that has been uh, discovered, uh, fulfilling, supporting the same domain, the same business areas, for sure you can identify right applications that are candidates for elimination, and for sure that obvious reduce your costs. So in OPEX, we do enterprise architecture. We also have a, a part of the solution for queuing on process process modeling and also data governance and for sure all those dimensions are interconnected together. So knowing a bit more your IT uh, will help you to understand how the IT supports the processes and for sure that will help you to optimize the way that you design your process. That will be the same for data 
Edouard talk a little bit about the data, the privacy, everything that are related to privacy and so on, sensitivity, security when it comes to data. This is something that we can also have as an input to have a data compliance initiative when we have more applications detected by, by the by the SaaS uh, by the SaaS platform. So we will see how we can handle a few of those use cases during the demonstration. But I want first to put those examples in this slide to show you how being a EA practitioner the SaaS discovery will be really helpful for you for your daily uh, work. So how does it work? So really briefly, in one hand, we have the BIMI platform uh, having the result of the discovery or your application with all the characteristics. Uh, so Edward presented the way that they performed the discovery. Then all this information are pushed into OPEX, into the repository, in order to consolidate and populate the list of your application that you have. And we push the application with multiple metadata that could be the cost, the product, the vendor, and so on, in order, as I said, to consolidate and to complete your IT inventory. Basically, the integration is done with an API and every information are shared automatically between the two systems. Okay, that is my last slide and I'm pretty sure that you are quite uh, impatient to see the demonstration. Let me just move to the demonstration. So first and foremost, uh, let me start with uh, the BIMI platform uh, that will contain the result of the, the, of the discovery. So here you have the, the older application that's been discovered with multiple characteristics, uh, the country, the implementations, the status, the authorization, is it shadow IT or not, and a more uh, business oriented information like the business capabilities or the cost center here, and also the usage, uh, which part of your organization is using this application um, on a daily basis. So Edouard already uh, explained uh, everything about the discovery mechanism, how we end up with just a list, and uh, those information, as I said, will be imported into the OPEX repository. For sure, each object comes with uh, an ID card where we will be able to find more details about the discovered application, as you can see here, that could be uh, information regarding the compliance. Uh, in addition to the classical uh, attribute that I've shown before. The, but also, we'll be able to see if this application is already imported in OPEX consolidated, and also how the detection has been performed to all the mechanisms uh, that, once again, uh, it were introduced. After this um, result, yeah, here this is the result of the discovery, everything will be pushed um, in OPEX. And uh, here I'm uh, connected through OPEX with uh, an enterprise architecture profile, and I will have access to the, my application catalog. With here uh, a special view on my SaaS applications, containing multiple characteristics imported from BIM. We have the ID, the cloud computing, the cost, will key, really important for rationalization, and a couple of attributes such as the authorization, the status, the detection dates, and many others. Consolidated view that for sure, as usual, for those that are not really familiar with OPEX, we have multiple uh, filters that you can apply. All the, the, the application, the SaaS applications, those um, and the workflows that, ask, that has been asked for validation, for instance. So here I'm focusing about only my SaaS applications. And from this view, I can start building multiple indicators, multiple KPIs. So the first one that we've been talking about is the 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 the, the the, the delta, the gap between what is known and what has been discovered. And uh, basically, this is something that we can see easily uh, using the platform to, to understand how far we were from the field, from the reality that what we have, we can use the instant report features to build the, the right report. Here we have the, the, the breakdown between the known and the unknown SAS. And basically, when we run that on my example that we, we've done we, with a customer, we end up with around 90% of the application, the SaaS application. We are talking about only the SaaS application that are not known by the IT dev. So this is a huge amount here that shows uh, the result of having um, um, SaaS discovery. 
So then we can move forward if we want to uh, drill down into uh, what has been discovered here, the unknown SARS. Uh, we can here, since BIMI can do it, have another level of authorization saying, okay, this is in review, this is authorized, I mean, okay, already known by the IT, but not yet documented, referenced in the EU repository, but we have thing that has been flagged as shadow IT. And here, by running another instant report, for instance, we can identify exactly what is our percentage of shadow SAS, still using um, uh, uh, a breakdown report, but using a different view, the authorization. Here, we end up with 50% of our unknown SAS here being shadow IT. This is a huge amount. So it's quite obvious, but this shows you how far you can be from the reality if you don't run SaaS discovery by only uh, leveraging the loan age and your, uh, the loan age of the application order, the architects. But for sure, here, as we introduced, nothing is documented really properly. The discovery helps you having this full picture on your IT landscape. Another angle, as I said, is to understand how IT and the business are aligned together. And this is one of the key deliverables of under enterprise architecture. So the business capabilities that we can have, we can model in OPEX. Um, as we've seen in, in, in BIMI, we can also retrieve the business capability and the sub capabilities to have this breakdown structure. So this map, this report shows your capability breakdown structure on multiple levels, one, two, three, it's up to you. But in addition, it shows how the application support how the IT support the business. And all the line that you can see here, all the applications with multiple characteristics that you can choose to display or not, it's up to you regarding uh, which part of the repository you want to study. But basically here, for my example, I've chosen to uh, show the discovered assets, the authorization and the status here to really leverage the value of the SaaS discovery. So, First of all, we can see where uh, which part of my business is impacted by the discovered assets. So by having that kind of filters here, and where do I have shadow IT? We will identify shadow IT. So we can see that uh, many pieces of my organization are impacted. And I wasn't aware of many applications there for really critical capabilities, such as e-commerce, HR management, and so on. And here, this shows you the, the, the gap between the truth and what has been documented before, consolidating the, the value and the information that you can have in the repository. If I focus, for instance, in one capability, let's, uh, for example, focus on the, the purchasing capability that we have there and removing all the filters that we've put there. Uh, if I drill down, I can see when it comes to the purchasing, purchasing uh, capabilities, I have here not a lot of applications. Uh, if I take a look to e-commerce, I have a bunch of applications here. But here, purchasing, we have five applications. Two of them have has been discovered, and I would say I have three uh, out of five that, uh, that have been already documented and linked to these capabilities. So for sure, we can deep dive into this business domain, these capabilities, to have a more a focused view on the capabilities here in the context of the processing activities. And this is where we can mix discovered information and information here, uh, evaluated, imported, documented by all enterprise architects. You can understand, in addition to the cost that we can discover, the business fit, the technical fit, the obsolescence weeks. All those information can be consolidated through OPEX by multiple mechanisms that could be assessment campaign, questionnaires that you can send out to all the application owners in order to end up with here the uh, criticality of your applications with here the, 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 the most common criteria that we have, as I said, business value, the technical efficiency, uh, the risk that you can have uh, for obsolescence, for instance. And those information that are, I would say, enterprise architecture information, with the discovered information, give you more information to rationalize the IT and make your right decisions. For instance, we have here six applications, sorry, I've seen five before, but six applications for the same thing. 
If you do, I would say classical rationalization, we have to deep dive into all features delivered by those application and do the trade-off, but here, let's make it simple for, for this webinar. Uh, in one side, we can see that I have really expensive applications, but those applications here are not really good in terms, once again, of business fits, technical fits, and, and so on. So there could be potentially right candidates for eliminations. So one thing that is key, have a look on the world map. With the instance report features, we can understand, okay, what's the plan? Okay, um, is it already on track that we will get rid of this application or not? And if not, we have to do something because basically this application are not so good. So if I take a look, I can see that this year, okay, we've already planned to retire those two applications. That apparently, based on all the assessment that we've done, doesn't bring value, don't bring value for, 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 the, for the business. It's good. So we are in a good shape regarding the life cycle and uh, the roadmap of this application here. And for sure, all this application will be there uh, here last longer than the, the bad ones, uh, I, I would say. Uh, you have it. Now, let's have a look there on this application. For sure, this is the SaaS applications. Uh, here, we have the price there, and obviously, as I said, candidate for elimination. So, as usual, each applications, each object within the EA repository, OPEX, comes with an ID card. And on the top, you have this, I would say, health dashboard that show you uh, the health of your applications in terms of business view um, here, technical efficiency, and so on. And everything is red there. That means it's a bad application, the right candidate for eliminations. And we can start understanding why it's so bad. So we won't have the time to go through all the characteristics. But here, for sure, we are pretty sure that we, we, we must get rid of these applications. To get rid of this application, we have to understand the interfaces, something that we can easily see uh, here. So Basically, this application is interfaced uh, with two other applications, which are the processing management platform and the custom ICM system. And we can also see the data exchange between all the components, meaning that if we uh, get rid of this application, if we retire this application, that will have an impact on all the applications in my ecosystem. Yeah, it's a good insight to plan the planification, to, to, to plan, uh, sorry, the, the retirement of these uh, of this applications. Um, regarding data, because I talk about the data, uh, here we have the, the flow, the data exchange, and for sure we have a more detailed view there uh, to understand exactly the data exchange with more characteristics, such as uh, the data owner, the level of action that this application has on a given data, is it sensitive, personal, golden data, and so on. So in OPEX, we have a full shoot to manage everything about data, data governance, and here a result focusing on this application to understand, uh, for instance, the sensitive data with all the detail. Uh, is it exchange, manage, the data owner, the, pers the person you have to reach out to if ever you, have, you want to have more information, and also the quality of the data. Okay, quite good. So we can also have this perspective before retiring this application understand how it's interfaced, the data manipulated to understand and assess the impact of the retirements. And if you want to move forward, we have also the ability to create a project. In OPEX, we also have the PPM features, the project, the project portfolio management feature that will help you to enable your transformation to project management. And you can track those projects in terms of delay, cost, and so on. So, it was a first introduction on how uh, BIMI uh, and OPEX works. For sure, as I said, we don't have the time to go to all the use cases. We can spend hours uh, diving into all the benefits of SaaS discovery for uh, EA practices. Uh, for sure, we'll be more than happy to uh, give you a demonstration uh, later on. So now uh, let's move forward to the questions. And uh, here, feel free to use the section to ask your question and uh, I, I give him back the stage to, um, to Edouard to uh, wrap up and end this webinar. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Axel. So uh, I think we have two questions came in already. Yeah. Um, I guess the first one is more for you, Axel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the mapping connection between SaaS app and business capabilities yeah. imported from BIMI. 
Yeah, exactly. Directly, as we demonstrated, uh, since in BME, we manage the application and also what we call guys categories or capabilities, representing uh, something that can represent the business side, everything can be imported. So you can at the same time initialize your, I would say, SaaS landscape, your business capability, your business capability landscape and connect the two together to have the same picture that I've uh, demonstrated. All right. Another what is the other questions? All of this functionality depends on the app owners providing accurate data on the application. Is there a trick to ensuring the app owners are representing the application accurately? You mean um, in OPEX directly uh, regarding this? Because what we do, uh, BIMI discovers data as we've seen in the in the platform. So we push a certain level of data uh, within OPEX. And then for sure, in the same practice that we have, you can involve multiple application owners, portfolio manager, through the, all the collaborative features that we have and the control that we have also in order to be sure that all the data are documented uh, properly within the repository. But it's a mechanism that we already have in OPEX, however, the, the whatever the way you import the data that would be manually to the discovery and so on. And we can for sure check the quality of the information populated to describe the different application. There is question most for you. How long did the implementation for the instruments bank projects take from start to finish? Yeah, very good question. Um, so it was depending on phases for sure. So the, the discovery part itself, just to uncover the shadow IT, uh, takes uh, on average between three to six months according to the um, mostly the time is like for the client to collect the data and to, to provide us the data as soon as we get the data it takes a month to, to 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 get the results then we have like a few weeks to refine so it's pretty fast after after collecting the right data uh, but that, that that's could um, that's what take take a bit of time at the beginning so the discovery let's say is like three to six months and then uh, we move up to the management phase, um, and the management phase was um, uh, actually uh, a, again a six months project implementation. Um, so it took us a year to come at the level of like mastering the SaaS, mastering the budget, um, starting to really like um, understanding the risk behind the applications, and uh, mitigating the risk and, and optimizing the budget with like highlighting the applications. So, um, so, so yeah, that, that's something that. Um, that, that, that in a nutshell, how, how long it take. There, there is another question for me actually, was on the, um, um, does BIMI has a good coverage of the Chinese SaaS application? Uh, great question. Uh, maybe I can share my screen again. Um, Go that... ahead. Yeah, actually um... I cannot. Yeah, I, you need to hand over me. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So um, our database so um, is actually very very broad in terms of, of of coverage. So just to give you some some figures, so we have 50k SaaS data reference. Uh, here's a geographic split that you can see on on the left. So um, uh, the biggest majority of the SaaS are coming from North America, coming from the US, uh, obviously, with a big part also from the Europe and also in Asia. Um, I would not say that we have uh, uh, a, a, a huge deepness into Chinese specific like software vendors that are like local, but we have uh, a lot uh, already in our database. So uh, um, we are working with European clients that have the subsidiary actually in in Asia and have a, like so we already have some experience um, to to deploy our solutions there. And maybe can it also allow me to to explain to you guys how we update this database um, um, on, on a daily basis. So. We, we have actually, it was the first thing that we built at BIMI um, uh, four years ago when we, started with the com when we started the company and we actually uh, enriched this methodology like um, weeks after weeks. And we have built some, some machine, machine learning algorithms and, and robots that are scrapping the web. Um, so we have those, those machines, those robots that are scrapping the web constantly and collecting information about the new SaaS and, about, and, and that are categorizing those SaaS into like features and, and, and business capabilities automatically. And then we, we have also built another algorithm uh, to make sure that once we start working with a client, we never miss any SaaS. Uh, 
So let me just explain how it works. So when, when we analyze the, the, the accounting data of our client and the, the log information, so we, where we are this phase, uh, we're going to match actually all the supplier names, all your supplier names with our database. And if we don't match a supplier name, let's, let's, let's imagine there is a, a SaaS company called Toto based in China that is selling to you and that we don't know to this SaaS Toto in our database. So it will uh, actually will connect automatically to the website uh, of, of this SaaS and will actually capture some keywords and put a scoring of probability of this uh, supplier of being a SaaS. And then in our team, people will actually review the list manually uh, to, to flag this uh, supplier of the SaaS. So every time we have a new client, we have this bit of manual work at the end to make sure we're detecting more than 99% of the SaaS that are using, that it's actually enriching our database, and that's how we enrich constantly our database uh, for each client. So um, I, I hope this, this, this helped to answer the question. Makes sense, um, thanks. Yeah, there's a question of, um, on, on how we integrate and how we can feed the data from existing SAM tool. Um, very good question, again, because it's true that we, we can uh, and reach data from, from the SAM tool. Um, uh, actually, we are positioning ourselves on very complementary basis. So we already have connectors with like uh, Aspera, Uzu, and we can work um, also with uh, with Plexera and, and Snow Software. Uh, we have a connector with uh, with ServiceNow as well. So that, that's something we are we are we are doing uh, naturally, and that's mainly on the on the second phase. Once we have done this auto detection, we're going to connect to the SAM tool the same way we connect to Mega to make sure we can sync the data. And, and make sure we can uh, identify which application is known in the SAM, which application is not known, and then we can find out a workflow to make sure we can automate the data from BIMI to SAM or from the SAM to BIMI and, and, and exactly the same way as we are doing with Mega as Axel presented before. Uh, it's just that the SAM tool are really focused on the big suites. So they are here to help you to discover the license, optimize the license of the big suite. They are not able to detect the long tail. We are focusing on the long tail, so we are partnering with, with, with the SAM tool also to, to provide to our client end-to-end -end capabilities in terms of SaaS management. Um, another question I think for me is like, uh, yeah. uh, with the reality of the remote working, how do we differ differentiate personal versus professional usage of SaaS application by our employee in, our, in your tool? So excellent question. So uh, this is uh, a core feature that we have developed, core scoring um, algorithms that we have developed um, to, um, to, to help our clients um, actually understand that. And in the platform, uh, if I just show you an example, here we have what we call a usage probability score. And this usage probability score, it's, it's actually a, a usage of probability of an application being used in SaaS uh, in a professional way. So we have developed like a lot of different scoring uh, approach uh, to, to, to show that if I just like share with you like few um, uh, elements, we're going to score actually the supplier type. Uh, we know that some supplier offer a free version and uh, a kind of B2C version versus B2B version. We're going to also classify all the hosting and sometimes we'll find your, the client name inside the hosting of the application. We'll also measure in terms of usage how many people are getting connected to the same app um, and do we have like different people from an organization and in-house people from the same organization that connect frequently to, 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 to the application. Uh, and we're going to also look at the usage shape, so what the time people are getting connected to the, to, to, to the app to, 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 make sure, to make sure this is like uh, coming in and, and, and we are able to, to provide that. We are also working in a, uh, on, an, on another source of detection that I cannot disclose because it's confidential, uh, but um, if, we, if we progress with some of you, we can like obviously like disclose that with an NDA, but that's help us to, to detect with even more accuracy people that are outside of the network that are from home that are using SaaS. Uh, so we are, we are we're tackling this point actually very well in, in, in our solution, but that's, that's a good question because I think that's a, uh, an important one. Exactly, thank you for the answer. It seems that we do not have any additional questions. Feel free if you have we can take one more questions before ending the webinar. So feel free, don't be shy.
Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, it seems that's uh, okay. We are done. So thank you uh, very much, all of you, for attending this webinar. Uh, we will share the recording and the slide as well in a um, following a follow up email. And uh, for sure, if you want to know more about BME or Mega or about the integration, you can reach out to us. Uh, we will come back uh, to you with pleasure. Yes, the presentation will be shared soon. Before we close out, though, I just want to say, Axel, thank you so much to you. Edward, thank you so much to you for your time. And of course, all of our attendees, thank you so much for spending uh, this past hour with us. We hope you enjoyed it, found it informative, and I will be sharing the recording of this session uh, later today. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate it and look forward to speaking with you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for having us. Have a good day. Bye.